Kirsty TV is about the power of sharing stories that heal ourselves and heal others. My guests share their most intimate stories and lessons learned along the way. Mia is one of the stars of the hit reality TV show, Push Girls. As a vibrant young girl, she was a competitive swimmer when at just 15, her life was changed forever. A ruptured blood vessel in her spinal cord left her paralyzed from the waist down, but that has not stopped her. So take me through that day. I remember asking my dad if I was ever gonna walk again that night. And he said, of course. And I also remember fast forwarding, coming out of the MRI and seeing my mom's face. And my mom's face just said, it's not good. Mm -hmm. And I still didn't know what that meant until the doctors did finally call me in for a meeting and they sat me down and they showed me the MRI images and they, they pointed to a squiggly line. And they said, see the squiggly line? I said, yeah. I said, well, that's an AVM. It's a blood vessel in your spinal cord and it ruptured. Um, it, we can say that you're probably not going to gain any movement or feeling back. However, there is a two year window until your spinal cord goes out of shock to see what you get back naturally. So there was hope at the time, but it was also, also it was also about facing reality and saying, OK, this is what happened. What can I do about it now? And fortunately, I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, where they have Shepherd Center. And it's one of the best rehab centers for spinal cord injury in the country. And from the moment I stepped into that hospital, they basically told me, hey, you can have the life you dreamed of. You can be independent. You know, let's teach you how to do it. And so from that point on, I knew that there were steps to take and I was ready to take them. So what were the first weeks, months like? It's all a blur, but I do have specific memories, and I do remember being very depressed, like super, super depressed. And I remember... So I, you're human. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's what proved it to my own self, you know? And well, because a lot of people, I mean, you, you obviously now you have dealt with this so courageously, but there's ups and downs for that for anybody. So yeah. there were times when this wasn't as easy for you to accept. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the rehab hospital for the first two weeks, I couldn't even sleep. So that was causing me more and more anxiety and not knowing what's going to happen. Like, what do I do? I can't even sit up on my own. I don't know how I'm going to live my life over. So I was very angry and very sad and depressed, and I did not shove those feelings under the rug. I definitely dealt with it. I, you know, I expressed my anger and my sadness and my fear with my nurses. And slowly but surely, I started to think, okay, what's important for me? And I asked the doctors, I said, can I still be independent? I had been independent my whole life. It was part of my personality. So I asked, you know, could I be independent? They said, sure. And I said, uh, could I still have kids? I really wanted to, you know, be a mother at some point. They said yes. And I said, can I still do sports? And they said, more than you can think of. And so I said, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. Let's do this. You know, let's move on and let's see if I can do all this stuff. And who was there for you during this time? Was family a big part of your support on in moving forward? You know, it, my family was a little bit... Um, I would say almost split on it. My, mm -hmm. my dad is a very um, accepting person and, and he's very laid back and easygoing and he just really, really wanted me to be happy. Now, my mom is different than me and she is a, you know, a big perfectionist and she wants things to be perfect and I think she was holding on to the fact that I could still walk and I could still mm -hmm. you know, be what I was before. So her and I always saw it differently. She, she thought I was giving up once I got to the point where I had accepted I may not mm. walk again. And I saw it as a stepping stone into really becoming who I am. Yeah, yeah. I mean, was that hard that there's people who want to give you hope or you, you might be able to go after this cure or that cure and um, people who don't sort of accept that you're happy how you are? I am, and, and it makes me more of who I am. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people want to uh, cure everyone, thinking, oh, well, I see a, a defect in them, let me fix it. And I don't blame people for having that feeling. People that don't know how I've dealt with paralysis may think it is my most challenging thing in life, mm -hmm. and I don't see it that way. I see it as something that makes me more of who I am every single day yeah. and gives me a purpose and a mission and you know, having something on the outside, which is 
exactly why I was so terrified of it from the beginning is being different on the outside. Now being different on the outside allows me to tell my story more often and to connect with people. And I feel that that is something that really drives me in my own mission and my own satisfaction in life. How do you think you get there? Because there's a lot of people that would really struggle with that. How do you think do you get to that place where you see it as such a gift? I think every single person has to do it differently. Um, some pe for me, it was, it was doing things that I was afraid to do mm. and having those moments of, gosh, it was so painful for me to sit up for the first time in my hospital bed after having surgery. And I remember specifically telling the nurse, I will never do that again. I, was, I will never sit up again. Mm. So it really is a matter of finding out what's one thing that will help you accept it. Don't think of you know, trying to, oh, I have to accept this because, because I'm supposed to. Yeah. Just find one thing that you're okay with about it and build from there. So you're in agony. You're just sitting up day one. What were some of the other things you went through in terms of rehab? I had to learn how to transfer to certain spaces, like even to this couch mm -hmm. or into a car or onto my bed. And even though I was a swimmer and I was really physically fit before I got paralyzed, being in the hospital for that long, I weighed 80 pounds. So I lost a lot of weight and I didn't have the strength. So it took me three months to be able to lift up my whole entire body wow. to be able to get to another surface. Just to be able to be independent. Yeah. And it was scary because you know, it was up until the day I was about to get discharged from the hospital, I still couldn't do it. And we would do these things called transfer runs. And you would go and you would go to the bathroom and you would go to the room and you'd go to a car and you had to go and do all these transfers. And I remember my physical therapist being like, very nervous. You said, you know you're leaving tomorrow and you still haven't conquered these things. And there was this one thing that was the hardest transfer of all and that was the floor transfer. And nobody left doing that um, except for very few people and no other girl. So on the last day when I was like called up, I, think, I woke up that morning and I said, you know what, I'm ready. This is my last chance. I don't want to leave this hospital without doing it. And I don't know if it was like purely mental or if I, you know, did had all that time to gain my strength back up, but everything just kind of collided and I had that awesome power day. I went through every transfer and at the end of the day I did the floor transfer. So what did you have to do on the floor? I had to get on the floor and then get back into my chair. So what was one of the biggest mountains to climb in terms of your fear? Uh, at different stages there were different things that felt the most scary for me. Mm -hmm. When I first got paralyzed, the most scary thing for me was going back to high school for the first time. I was terrified of that more than anything because I didn't want to go back to school and be different. There was nobody else in a wheelchair in my school. It didn't even have an elevator. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't even accessible and I just feared not being accepted after having you know such a bond with my friends and just all of a sudden feeling like an outcast and the moment I stepped into that school I saw everybody and they were just super happy to see me again it wasn't like they cared about the chair yeah. in fact I heard someone walk away and say it's Mia she's just sitting down <laughs> and, I, and it was those moments where I realized you know what that's so true. We are all who we are, not because of our physical appearances or because of you know, what people see as limited. We really are beyond all that. People always say, you know, I'm sure your life is so much harder now. And I say, no, it is so much easier because mentally I'm so much stronger. What do you think is the biggest misconception about you? I would say that you know, people think the wheelchair is my, my biggest challenge you know, that that's the hardest thing for me in life, or maybe I'm putting up a front about it and I'm secretly unhappy because <laughs> all I want to do is walk again. And it's just not, it's just not. There's this big secret. Yeah. I actually want to walk. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm I spend that. all night fantasying about it. It's all I dream about. So when you speak, what is one of the core philosophies that you like to impart and leave people with? Yeah, for me, I, I really speak to that, that darkness to light. I think every single person has those moments where they, they, they're in the dark and they don't see the light and they can stay that way. Yeah. But that's the opportunity to be able to 
go into the light and really feel a difference and become more of who you are. And so I talk about that journey that I went through in my own process mm -hmm. of switching the light on and how to do it. Even when you have the worst day of your life, when you're going through the worst thing that could ever happen to you in your life. You know, if someone had told me right before I got paralyzed, what would you do if you got paralyzed? I'd say, Psh, I'd probably want to die, you know? And yeah. there's truth to that. I felt that way. I wanted to die when it first happened. I have a journal entry to prove it. But now here I am saying, that's the best thing that ever happened to me, mm. you know? And, and so I do like to talk about having that moment and going to a different place and what's in between. When you look at that journal entry now, how do you feel for that young girl? I feel like I want to speak out to her and say, don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. I love this idea of, of your philosophies around how this challenge in your life has made you a better person. That by having this obstacle, you had to learn how to overcome so many fears. Can you expand on that a bit more? I just, I just love how you see that. Yeah, I don't, I don't see the wheelchair as an obstacle. I see it as a challenge. Yep. And I think for me, challenge is something that fuels me. And I think all of us have this, this need to accomplish something and challenges give us the challenges give us those opportunities mm. to accomplish something <laughs> i love that i yeah. love that so see the obstacle as a challenge understand the challenge is to test you and help you grow and and become all of who you can be and be willing to sit within them and and work out whatever you're feeling and get through it yeah. well it has been amazing. Aww, thank you, I Beth. just so love sitting here and talking with you. So thank you so much. So for anyone out there, no matter what you're going through, we all have obstacles in life. Make sure that you see them as a challenge. Face your fears head on and understand that through that process, you can actually become the best you. I look forward to seeing you next time on Kirsty TV. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel below, tweet, tweet us, and send in your posts and comments. I love hearing from you. Bye. And I hear someone calling my name when I turned around. There she was, Oprah Winfrey, on Thursday morning. And I, I, I wasn't even thinking. I was just like, 